Welcome to Mysteries, Myths, and Legends. I'm Taylor. I'm Savannah. And welcome to the show. Episode 20. Can you freaking believe it? <laughs> Episode 20. Literally, y'all have listened to us talk for 20 hours. Well, after this episode, but like, yeah, what? Honestly, when we started the podcast, I our goal was ten, mm-hmm. and now we've doubled that, mm-hmm. and we're gonna keep going until infinity and beyond. I just wanna, I wanna make it through a whole year. Oh, I'm same. ready for that, because that would be fifty-two. Okay, well, honestly, we're almost halfway there, so that's actually really crazy. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow. Well, thanks for sticking with us for so long. Mm-hmm. Or if you skipped to this episode, um, <laughs> thanks for listening. <laughs> yeah, thanks for listening regardless. <laughs> yeah, honestly. <laughs> we love that. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, really important. We're very late on this. Um, we've had a very stressful couple weeks. Um, so yeah. we're a little behind on the alien <laughs> update, but we're here to tell you about what the government came out with for the aliens. <laughs> Um, Which was um, a whole lot of nothing. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Stuff we already knew. So that's great for them. Basically, they were just like, the UFOs, which, if you don't know what that is, unexplained flying objects, I think. Unexplained, unidentified, whatever. Same stuff. Um, That UFOs that are, like, being seen, like the Tic Tac-shaped UFOs that have been filmed are not and they are confirmed to not be secret projects by the government Mm -hmm. so basically they're saying like it's not us (laughs) so it's aliens but i'm like okay well so what was the hype for then because yeah like we knew it was aliens yeah like so yeah so it was really kind of a downer but it's okay maybe they'll come out with something yeah it Maybe that was just, like, th- the build-up, you know? Like, I know. It also makes me think of Project Bluebeam. If you don't know what that mm-hmm. is, look it up, because I don't want to explain it all right now. <laughs> but I feel like that could be the start of that, which is kind of scary. Okay, but Savannah, whatever. explain a little bit. <laughs> okay, okay. Just like Project Bluebeam is just a theory. It's not... It's not real, or I mean, maybe it's, it's real. Well, I don't know. Yeah. It's a theory <laughs> that the government is going to... Um, basically tell everybody that there's aliens and then fake an alien attack on like a city or something and then have like a a war against aliens so it's basically a theory that the government's going to start a war and blame the aliens yeah even though it was them yeah yeah so So, just a conspiracy (laughs) theory don't come for us government just a theory (laughs) but yeah so i guess we'll have to just see (laughs) <laughs> in the next couple episodes or so if yeah. we go into a war with some aliens <laughs> so okay i feel like that's like years in the making right mm, i don't know like it'll probably be in a few years <laughs> yeah we can help <laughs> <laughs> okay well anyways let's move on from that topic um so i actually just did a covid antibody test oh isn't that crazy yeah why are you doing um, that um because with one of the hospitals around here, um, Wake Forest, uh, mm-hmm. they, I guess, I think there's multiple hospitals, like, across the U.S. Yeah. Um, that are doing this. It's, like, a research project on COVID, and, Ooh. like, every day they send me, like, a survey, so I have to mark if I have any symptoms or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they selected me to do the antibody tests um so i got six tests and i'm supposed to do one per month for the next few months that's crazy what do you have to do um basically prick your finger and put the blood on this little testy thing and it almost okay it almost looks like a pregnancy test because (laughs) because you put it on there and then two lines will show up if you're if you have the yes we're expecting covid i know (laughs) yeah so i actually got two lines so i guess i have the antibodies which makes sense because i did get the vaccine so wow that's really cool you're gonna it says like you get an app and scan your thing on the app so it'll tell me my results in like a day or something what? but i'm pretty sure it, it means that i have 
anybody's so yeah no it definitely that's what it means that's really cool you're like kids one day you're gonna look back like in their textbooks when it's all about like oh the big pandemic coronavirus and then they're gonna have statistics and then it's just gonna be your low blood antibody <laughs> <laughs> i know, Here's my I know. Mom. <laughs> yeah that's yeah, so funny cool. <laughs> that's really cool though mm-hmm. i always wanted to like see if i had covid because i did have a theory that i had covid before like it got big, but yeah. I guess I'll never be able to tell now because I'm vaccinated. I know, me too. <laughs> so oh. I wish I would have done it before. Same. Just to see if I had them. Same. Oh well, I guess I'll never know. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. Crazy. Well, uh, you want to go ahead and get started? I'm so excited. I'm yes. excited for my story, so I'm excited to hear what Ooh, you got. I'm really for excited us this about week. this one. And honestly, it's a good transition because this one has to do with blood. Oh. Blood. <laughs> yes. This week I'm talking about New Orleans vampires. <laughs> Not Savannah and vampires. That's Savannah's literally her favorite topic ever. <laughs> so I okay. love that. Give it to I'm, me. Tell me I'm about some Edwards. I'm currently reading um, Midnight Sun. Mm-hmm. So. We have the you biggest Twilight the... fan in the room <laughs> is Savannah. Yeah, this Midnight Sun is the most recent Twilight book. It's um. Twilight, but from Edward's perspective. <laughs> we love that. Fun fact, before you tell your story, when Savannah was here last time, we played Twilight Seen It. <laughs> if you know what that is, it's like a really old game. And um, I lost really bad to Savannah because, yeah. as I said, she was the biggest <laughs> fan. So, <laughs> Well, because I had watched the movies recently. Too, true, so. true. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we have to have a rematch. You have yeah, to we watch do. Them. Let me watch them and then we'll round two. Yeah. Okay, actually, I was going to start off by saying, um, I know, like, Vampire Diaries is a big thing. Yeah, Didn't you say it was, like, yes. New Orleans Vampire? Yes, it's literally New Orleans. That's literally the show. Yeah, the so I haven't Vampires. watched that. <laughs> but okay. I need to watch it. You definitely need to watch it. It seems like I would, it seems like I would like it after you doing all this research. You love stuff. it. Okay, so I wanted to mention that, and I also, back to Twilight again. <laughs> It is mentioned in one of the Twilight books. I don't really remember which one, mm-hmm. but it's mentioned that Edward spent time in New Orleans. So <laughs> this is just a story about Edward Cullen. <laughs> I think, like, so, like all of them sort of would go there or something to wow. party or yeah, just to know. hang out with all the other vampires. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, because New it's Orleans the, yeah. has a bunch of vampires. Exactly. That's what I'm about to tell you. <laughs> okay, so yeah, the Twilight vampires are not an exception. They have been there too. <laughs> we love that. All right. So first, I'm going to tell you about um, this person, the Count St. Germain. Um, he actually was not in New Orleans, but I'll get to that part later. Okay. Um, he was actually in France in the 1700s. Oh, wee oui, wee. Oui. Yes. So the Count St. Germain... Um, that's just, like, what he went by. Mm-hmm. Count St. Think... Germain. I'm going yeah. to Count Taylor Lively from now on. <laughs> no, but nobody knew his real name. <laughs> oh, that's not his... Like, Germain's not his real name. No. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. So, like... Yeah. Um, and it, it's, like, he's exactly what you think of when you think of a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is he bald, pale? Um... I think mostly it's just, like, the characteristics of, like, what he does and stuff. Oh, I thought you meant what he looks like. (laughs) I mean, it is sort of what he looks like, too. I'll explain. But (laughs) it it also might be partly because it was the 1700s in France. Yeah, that's true. But, like, I mean, it's kind of vampire-y. So, yeah, nobody really knew his real name was a big part of it. Um, He was a master of the piano and violin. Very vampire-y to me. <laughs> <laughs> the violin, especially, I feel like. Uh, yeah, he knew six languages. Oh, wow. Uh, he composed his own music. Um, he was rich, and nobody knew how he had all the money. Oh, yeah, because also, I forget all the time that vampires, like, live for a really long time. Yes, they're immortal. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Supposedly Im- immortal. Um, so, yeah, he... Yeah, he had just, like, a bunch of money. Nobody knew where it came from. Probably because he's immortal and just yeah, saved I mean, up money. After time, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, people said he would carry gems around in his clothing. Wow, that's me. Which, like... Uh, me, except know. for his crystals. 
Yeah, like, I guess that is the same thing. I don't know. <laughs> He's probably got, like, Similar. rubies, though. Like, yeah, expensive probably. ones. Mm -hmm. um, nobody knew anything about his family or where he came from. Oh. So that one's really suspicious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, I feel like some of this stuff could be explained by, like, it was in the past and maybe some of the records were gone. Yeah. But I think some of the stuff I saw said people during that time have like been recorded saying that they don't know anything about him oh, oh. so it's not even that like we can't find record it's yeah, because like people who don't knew know. him were like we don't know anything about this guy that's so weird i would not feel comfortable if i didn't know anything about somebody <laughs> i know um so in close to his death his death in quotes um, <laughs> he claimed to be the son of francis the second rizzo this name is like hard. <laughs> Francis the second of Rizzoki of Prince the Prince of Transylvania. No. He did not say that. <laughs> yeah. He said I he wanted to say that yeah. earlier, but I didn't want to be insensitive to other vampires. Because <laughs> 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 like I don't know if all the vampires are from Transylvania. <laughs> well, some are from New Orleans. <laughs> exactly. That's see that's what I, that's why I didn't say it earlier. <laughs> no, but yeah, so I guess I don't know. Oh, that's crazy. He, that's what he said to people. Um, and when you, like, that, that's even what it says, like, on his Wikipedia page, because this guy was, like, part of the French government, I guess, because he was a count. Like, oh, wow. I don't know what counts do, but. Same. So he has, like, a whole Wikipedia page, and he said, he said that, like, um, the prince of Transylvania that he claimed was his dad, he did have one son, but it was, like, reported that he died young. Oh, maybe so, he died in quotation marks young. Yeah, so, like, it could be him, or, like, he, like, maybe he did actually die, or it could be, like, a lie to predict his yeah. identity, you know? And if he is a vampire, like, probably that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Like, maybe the parents of this baby, they were like, oh, we need to just, like, fake, fake his death. Exactly. Plus, like, you said he was a prince, right? The dad? allegedly yeah. so like yeah. i mean people have their eyes on him you know like the prince's know, yeah. son like let's watch him but they, mm -hmm. they can't because he's a vampire yeah exactly um and i actually like looked up the book like when did dracula come out mm -hmm. <laughs> but apparently i don't know if this is true actually now that i'm looking at it it says 1987 i but i thought it was way older than that hmm, I don't did know. i write that down wrong you continue and i can look it up Okay, yeah, you should. Because <laughs> now that I'm looking at that, did I mean to write 18? a different year? Yeah, yeah, I'll look it up. I don't know. Yes, it's 1897. Okay, yeah, so I wrote it wrong. But, so 1897, that's still after he was, like, supposedly died. Oh, like, when? So. When is this, when is he from? The 1700s. Oh, okay. Okay. So, like... I think they reported he died in 1784. Mm -hmm. So okay, it's not so it's like before he, Dracula. Yeah, it's not like the media. <laughs> it's not like he just said that his dad was Prince of Transylvania because of the book, and like people thought mm -hmm. he was a vampire. Or something. Wow, you know, like yeah, that's okay. That's crazy. Actually, said that because because he, he is because <laughs> he his dad literally yeah. is the Prince of Transylvania. <laughs> literally. Um, some other weird things. He had a passion for alchemy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Which is, like, that just seems like a vampire thing, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, isn't alchemy, like, a mixture of chemistry and, like, magic? magic? And yes. I don't know. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, people said he had an extraordinary talent for maintaining his youth. Mm-hmm. Oh, I wonder why. Yeah. Some people were like, oh, maybe it's cosmetics and, like, herbs and stuff that he yeah. uses. Or maybe or he's, he's a vampire. immortal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go with the immortality. Same. Oh, and this was a big one. No one even knew his true age. Oh, wow. Okay, so they didn't have, like, birthday parties for him. Like, oh, happy 50th. Yeah, I guess not. Jermaine. Like, nobody knew his, <laughs> no one knew his name or his birthday or, like, So anything. they didn't know a single thing about him, actually. No, they were just crazy. like, yeah, this rando Cardizian beside me right here. Seriously. Like, I don't know how common it was back in the day to like not know this stuff about people like i don't yeah. know i feel like it's it was sort of a thing people wouldn't know their own birthday or stuff something i don't like, know isn't that true 
I don't know. But yeah. you would at least know your name. <laughs> I know. Yeah. You would at least know one thing. I feel like he doesn't <laughs> yeah, know a single true. thing. For sure. Okay, and so nobody knew his true age, and he had, like, many portraits done of him over the years, mm -hmm. and in all of them, he looks about 40. Oh, my God. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> yeah. That's so So, creepy. like, he doesn't look super young, like, about yeah. 40. Well, maybe he became know? a vampire then. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um... Oh my god. Also this one. <laughs> His Wikipedia, like, it says that he would claim that he's 500 years old. <laughs> he, I think he said it as a joke, but, like, people took it as a joke. But, yeah. like, was he telling the truth? Right. Like, they're, they're like, this man, he's so funny. A little comedian over here. He's like, no, what? My dad really is the prince of Transylvania, and I am 500 years old. <laughs> yeah, I feel like both of those can't be true. Like, <laughs> one of them is, but... <laughs> No, I feel like they're both true. Well, it, the timing's off. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. But, I don't know. I feel like he's more likely to be 500 years old. <laughs> yeah. Because I think, uh, yeah, like, his one son who, like, reportedly died, the, the prince's son who reportedly died, mm -hmm. was born, like at a different time than he would have been born. So, oh, like, the okay. age was sort of off, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. <clears throat> Alright. Um, okay, so he would throw dinner parties and, like, invite people over, but no one ever saw him eat anything. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> like, this guy's crazy. Is he really a vampire? <laughs> like, if he's not a vampire, <laughs> this man is, like, the weirdest man I have ever heard of in my <laughs> whole life. No, I know. Um, but he would just sit there and sip his wine. His or wine? Or blood. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say, is it, is it red wine? I think it was. Oh my god. <laughs> and it's just so funny because, like, when I was in middle school, I would, like, pretend like I was a vampire, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but this man, like, Dracula wasn't even out yet. So, and Twilight no, wasn't out yet. Like, he has Seriously. no reason to be believing this stuff. <laughs> but I do wonder... How far back the legend of the vampire goes? Because I bet it's before yeah. the 1800s. Yeah, I think it's it's a pretty old legend. Yeah. So maybe he knew about that and just like like still wanted to be like, yeah, I'm a vampire. Like, mm -hmm. like my bites. <laughs> or maybe it's all based on him. True. I mean, that's. I mean, yeah. Because he's so crazy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if if he's really not a vampire, this is he's really doing putting in some work to make him look Se like it is. No, seriously. Okay, so he reportedly died in 1784, mm -hmm. um, but people have claimed that he they saw him after this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, nobody saw his death. Yeah. How did he claim and to die? I don't know. It didn't really say. Hmm. I guess Suspicious. Just, yeah, I know. Uh, and apparently, like, he died right before the French Revolution, mm -hmm. and people say that he had, like, foreseen it coming. Like, Alice who? <laughs> <laughs> that was his power. <laughs> yeah, I know. He's like Alice Kalu. <laughs> I love Alice. She's my okay. fave. Yeah, same. Um, okay. I feel so bad for the people who, like, haven't watched Twilight and are listening to this. I know. <laughs> They're like, who is Alice? Who is Edward? But honestly, yeah. if you haven't listened to Twilight, if you haven't watched Twilight, you gotta get out. Mm -hmm. Not really, <laughs> but, like, mm. <laughs> <clears throat> Mm-hmm. Okay. Where? We love losing our spot. <laughs> <Where am I? laughs> no. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to talk about, I'm done talking about this guy. The next guy is, um, uh, Jack St. Germain. Is that not the same person? Um, <laughs> no, it's not. Well, we'll see. <laughs> is this that not the same name? Um, it's Jacques St. Germain. Okay, what was the other guy's name? The Count St. Germain. <laughs> okay, I was like, Savannah, I feel like it's the same name, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this guy is in New Orleans in mm -hmm. the early 20th century. Oh, I see where you're going here, okay. So after that. Mm-hmm. And Pretty far he, after had that. A, he had a lot of money. Mm-hmm. He looked to be around 40. Mm-hmm. Uh, he had a mysterious background. 
<laughs> he threw dinner parties, but nobody saw him eat anything. He Please. would just sip his wine. Please. He couldn't even have made another name. <laughs> I mean, he kind of did. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> it still sounds French, though. <laughs> I knew immediately it was the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, okay, so here's the story. One night... Uh, I think after a dinner party he had, he had one sta lady stay the night, mm -hmm. um, and they were out on his balcony of his apartment, and he tried to bite her neck. Stop. Stop. <laughs> no. Yes. She got away, and she went and told the police. Oh my god, so that's literally confirmed? I guess, yeah. Oh my god. This man's a vampire. So, when the police got to his house, he was gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Um, the tablecloths had blood on them. <sighs> there was no food in the kitchen, and there was no trace that there has ever been food. What? Oh, my God. Which is, like, that part kind of gets me, because it's, like, didn't he have dinner parties? Like, right. you're not cooking for other people? But whatever. I was going to say, maybe he, like, door dashed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> um... So, the policemen, they sat down, they're like, alright, we're just gonna try some of this wine, because we're like, this what? guy left. <laughs> Why would they do that? Why not? They pour it out, and then they they spit it out. Because it's blood. Because it's wine mixed with human blood. Oh. Oh my god. Like, half and half, I guess. Yeah, he still wanted to get drunk, but he also just wanted to eat. Right, yeah, yeah. So, I have here, are they the same person? Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think very obviously... This is the same person. Yeah. I so mean, that, if it's not, the coincidence is just a little bit too much for me to handle. I know. No, exactly. I think this is, like, the most famous, like, vampire that's in New Orleans. And mm -hmm. I guess he's gone now because he left after that, but... Yeah. Um, well, he probably just has to keep moving around because he almost got caught there. Oh, I know. Yeah. Maybe, I mean, maybe he went back. Maybe. Maybe. I guess it's not really confirmed if they looked alike, because I didn't really see anything about that, but maybe they did. Yeah. I mean... Well, you said they were around the same age, like, for, around yes, 40s. Yes, looked to be around 40. So, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is the two St. Germains. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, so, next story of the vampires. Um, this one's about John and Wayne Carter. Mm-hmm. They were brothers who lived in New Orleans, or New Orleans. <laughs> I used to say it, New Orleans. I honestly said um, it. But then I'm like, I, mean, I know no, the proper way it's like to say yeah. it. Yeah, that's the proper way. So sometimes I like accidentally say it wrong. But anyways, okay, so in the 1930s, mm -hmm. so we're jumping ahead again. Uh, they seem to be like normal people. They just like go to work, come back home, you know. Mm-hmm. But one day, a woman ran out of their house uh, and went to the police. Oh my god. This is, honestly, this is a little bit of true crime. Oh. A little bit. Um, oh my god. Hold on. Juju just literally ripped my door open. <laughs> um, be back in five seconds. Okay. So sorry about the interruption. Assistant Juju, you know, sometimes he likes to work, sometimes he doesn't. What can I say? But anyways, back to this lady who ran out of the brother's house. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, she ran out of their house to the police and she had, cu um, cuts on her wrists. No. Oh, that pains yeah. me. Yeah. And it's like, I think they were, like, horizontal cuts. Oh, yeah. no! So it wasn't like... No. I guess it wasn't, like, bleeding a lot, just, like, enough for a little bit of blood to come out. Yeah. Like, not enough that it was going to kill yeah, her like, right yeah. away. Yeah. Yeah. So, they were draining her blood to drink it. That's what she said. Oh. oh my god. To the police. Yeah. Um, and they actually had other people captive there, too. What? And they were draining their blood, too. Yeah, when the police went there, they found, like, several people. No. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, so, um, after this, they were actually arrested and given the death penalty. Were they put Shit. to death? Yeah. 
Oh my god. See, I always think about like, oh, vampires are so cool. Because mm-hmm. I always like forget that they have to kill people to drink their blood. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> well, actually, I'll get to something in, in a little bit that might change your mind. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> um, so yeah, they, this part's, I mean, what, uh, what all the stuff I just said kind of went kind of fast through the story, but I'm just saying the basics. Um, yeah, they were arrested, given the death penalty, then they were executed, and in New Orleans, like, there's, they have family vaults for, like, graves. Mm-hmm. Do you know about those? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, so basically, yeah. you open the vaults and put, and, like, all of your family members will go in there, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or and. Like, yeah. Not every single one, but. But, like, several people. Yes, multiple people, all in one. Right. So, they, they went into their family vault, and here's where the, the crazy part comes in. Um, they opened it back up for, like, in a few few years after this for another member of the family to go in. Mm-hmm. And they discovered that they weren't in there. What? There was oh no God. trace of John or Wayne Carter. Hmm. And I wonder why. Yes. And here's another spooky thing. They were seen jumping off a balcony running away. Sometime after this. Oh my gosh. I really cannot believe that. That this is so <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Um, and supposedly, uh, one of the people that they had in their house, they turned into a vampire and they were later found to be a serial killer as well. No. No. <laughs> I know. This I know. is like too much for me to handle, honestly. Because like I, yeah. I really think that this might be real. Yeah, I like, mean, I'm normally sure I this say that. Happened, like, I, like, I do always say that I believe that they're real, but I really don't always believe that they're real. But this one, I really, I really don't know. I really kind of believe it. Mm hmm. I know, that's what I was thinking too. Um, so yeah, that guy, they like supposedly turned into one. Um, he killed people and drank their blood too. And then they said that. Like, it's said that apparently you can turn into a vampire when, like, a vampire drinks your blood for seven nights in a row. Oh. Which, I mean, that's not how it works in Twilight, but... (laughs) (laughs) Savannah based all of her research on Twilight. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, that's what what my research here said. Wow. I did not know that. That makes sense, though. That was interesting. So that's maybe that's why they had so many people in their house though. Like that's kind of crazy. That's so crazy. Wait, do you have the name of that guy that was a serial killer? I didn't write it down. I'm gonna look it up because now I'm very intrigued. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that one, I I could have probably put more detail into that, but I had other th- other things I want to talk about, and I didn't want to like take up too much time with that. For sure. Okay, so another thing that's, like, famous in New Orleans with, like, when you're talking about vampires is the Casket Girls. Have you heard of that at all? Um, I feel like that's a thing in Vampire Diaries, but I don't really remember off the top of my head. Okay. So, what I can tell, um, from, like, all the research I did, like... Some people don't really believe this one as much, but it's just, like, a popular story, so I thought I would tell it. Um, so, there, this is a story about, like, women coming over to New Orleans when it was, like, still first a settlement. Mm-hmm. Um, originally, they were called Casquette Girls, which is, like, C-A-S-Q-U-E-T-T-E. Like, mm-hmm. it's a French word. Yeah. Um, and then that, like, slowly turned into casket, like... Yeah, like... C-A-S-K-E-T. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I guess just the way you say it, they sound similar. And casket sounds creepy. So... <laughs> but casket is, like, the French word for, like, a suitcase. Oh, so, okay. it's not as scary. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, um, the casket girls, they came over and they had their boxes... That they had their clothes in. They all had their little caskets. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and the reason that all these women were going over to New Orleans it was because like New Orleans had sent or they they had sent like a bunch of criminals and like all these men out to New Orleans and there were no women out there mm-hmm. for them to marry. Oh, okay. So they sent of women course. over there to yeah. marry them. That sounds about right. Yeah. And I think there was something I read about like, oh, we didn't want them to marry the the natives there. It's just like, okay, okay yeah. well, whatever. Okay. What literally whatever. Mhm. But yeah, so that's why they sent them over there. Um so they convinced the women to go, but a lot of them left the ship before it made it to New Orleans and they got off at like other stops. Mhm. And I guess they left their luggage. Oh. Um and some things that I read said that they actually looked like little caskets. Like, oh. that's the shape of them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they looked kind of creepy. Um, and the legend is that they smuggled in vampires in their caskets. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that's really funny. Yeah. So they're... Um, the legend is that, like, the caskets are still in New Orleans. They're in the attic of the old Ursuline Covenant. Oh. Which I guess is a... Church? Sounds like a church. Yeah, I don't know. It sounds like a church. Um, It's the oldest building in the Mississippi Valley. Dude, we have to go to New Orleans now. I know. I mean, we were already going to have to go, but now we really have to go. I know. I really want to. Uh, So yeah, they have, they have them in there, apparently, in the attic. And they have them locked away, so the vampires are trapped in there. Oh. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, they, they, so there's no way they could escape at all. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I think they, like, nailed them shut or they nailed the door shut or something mm-hmm. like that. So. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that was pretty cool, I think. I mean, it's yeah. not really as convincing as those other stories were. Yeah, but it's so cool. Okay, so this is where I'm really going to get you, Taylor. <laughs> I'm ready. There are real vampires in New Orleans yeah. right now. Okay. Yes, I... I believe that. <laughs> I've heard that. I've heard that outside of you saying this. I have yeah. heard that yeah. real vampire. I mean, I didn't really have any evidence to believe that before, but now I'm ready. <laughs> All right. So actually, do you want me to tell you more about like the past vampires or go straight into like the ones now? Mm. I guess I'll tell you about some of, some more of the history of okay. it. Yeah. Just like I have like four more points. Sounds good. So... This is more of, like, explaining explaining in a way. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, like, if they don't actually exist, this yeah. might be why people think they're vampires in New Orleans. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, need, um, I would like to know that information. For sure. Yeah. So, apparently, tuberculosis and syphilis mm-hmm. could have been a big reason. Okay. Because there were a lot of people who had that, and the symptoms make you kind of look like a vampire. <laughs> mm-hmm. Definitely. So, tuberculosis will make you cough up blood. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Makes and sense. Pale. I feel like I have tuberculosis right now. Yeah, see? There you go. Um, and you're like, I guess you're, you're pale, weak, stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, and then syphilis, when you're born with it, you actually can have elongated fingers and pointed teeth. Oh, no way. I don't think I knew yeah. that. Uh, I didn't know that either. So apparently that can... that. I mean, that sounds like a vampire to me. Oh, for sure. So that makes sense. Mm-hmm. All right, so that's that's what I have on that. But this part is, like, the interesting thing. Um, <laughs> there are about 50 people who claim to be vampires in New Orleans okay. right now. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of people, first of all. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, for, like, one city. And, I mean, also, that's just the people that are claiming it. Like, yeah. you know, there's probably people that aren't claiming it. Yeah, true, like, hiding or something. Mm-hmm. All right, so there's... It's pretty much equal numbers of men and women, so it's not really, like, mm-hmm. on Bias, one side. Yeah. Um, and the ages is, like, 18 to 50, so it's, like, big range. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they're all mostly white. Yeah. Sounds about... <laughs> so there's that. Sounds about white. Yeah. Um, there is a, a New Orleans Vampire Association. <laughs> I would it's like called, to join. Which... Um, they go by Nova because those are the yeah the letters. Mm-hmm. Um, it was established in two thousand five after Hurricane Katrina. Oh wow! 
yeah so that's kind of cool and they actually serve food to the homeless and host like silent auctions and wow. do community things okay we love we love nova yeah so honestly some of these vampires are pretty good <laughs> <laughs> um they have a website but it, it hasn't been updated <laughs> since, they have like, 2015. better things to do <laughs> true i guess <laughs> Um, okay, so here's, like, the big thing. Clinical vampirism. Okay. Vamp vampirism, vampirism. I don't I know. I think it's vampirism. It? Yeah. It's sort of a thing. Wow, okay. <laughs> it's not really, like, I don't think it's technically classified in, like, a mental... Yeah, like, in the DSM? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. not, but, like, people still reference it. How it's interesting. Also yeah, and it also goes by Renfield Syndrome. Oh, okay. So, for this, um, you truly believe that you need blood to survive, and, or that it's, like, beneficial to your health. Mm hmm And some say that they're nocturnal, have fangs, you know, vampire yeah. stuff. Mm hmm Um, there's about 5,000 people in the U.S. who have this. Wow. Or they're actually vampires. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I mean... I don't I want to like, diagnose them, but, like... Yeah, I feel like it's a very thin line between, like, how could you tell if it, they just think that they are or if they are. I know. Or if it's just yeah. one and the same thing. I, I mean, that, that's hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the way people, like, find out that they're vampires or, like, start thinking they are... Um, some people will, like, start drinking blood by accident. Like, I don't know if you... Like, maybe you yourself. have a cut yeah. and you, like, put it, your finger in your mouth. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've done it. Like, everyone does that. Yeah, I've done it. Um, I've never wanted then, to drink the blood, though, because it literally tastes disgusting. No, yeah, true. Uh, but then, like, these people will drink it and then they're, they realize they're like, Oh, this is giving me energy. Or, like, oh, it's giving me psychic powers. Oh. <laughs> That's what some people say it does. Love that. Um... Yeah, and then there's there's actually people who willingly give their blood for, for like, feeding. Yeah. Yeah, there's actually a My Strange Addiction episode, and, like, oh, she's really? addicted to drinking blood. <gasps> and See, she's one of them. Yeah, she she's one this. of them, and her boyfriend willingly gives his blood. I mean, not, not yeah. all of it, obviously, but just, like, when she needs it. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it's definitely so that, real. That's like, that, like, happens a lot of the time. Like, they'll just give you a little bit at a time, and it's just, like... Wow. And some... Thing I read said like a lot of people will want to they call it feeding uh, mm -hmm. they want to feed like two to three times a week wow that is so crazy I know there are real vampires like seriously like even if it's not really like vampires how we think like immortal and stuff people will, are out there drinking blood <laughs> people who drink blood that is a vampire yeah, like, like that. I mean, if you enjoy the taste of blood, that's a vampire. I know, <laughs> in my opinion. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, anyways, people say that they don't choose it, and that it's like a medical condition mm -hmm. too. That's another big thing. Oh, okay. Um. Yeah, I know. Um, one lady said that she went without feeding for a while and then ended up in the ER with a low heart rate and she was like passing out and stuff because she was hungry <laughs> i know right but also that makes me think like are you just anemic <laughs> right okay and that's what i was gonna say also is that like are these people anemic because like maybe they just need more blood right or more like iron you know and then that, that started making me think like are vampires in general anemic <laughs> I mean, probably. Is that why they need blood to survive? Suddenly we have cracked the case. Yeah, we know it now. It's kind of crazy. It really is. Um, so the last point I have here, last fun fact I have is uh, people will drink blood like in their tea and just like mix it in. Ew. <laughs> mix it into their, I guess that guy mixed it into his wine. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Jermaine. So what do you think? Do we think that like there's real vampires? Or, like, mm. just the people who, like, might think they are? Mm. If, I mean, if I'm not going to lie, I mean, I mean, I think there are real vampires and fake vampires. I feel vampires. like there could be, yeah, there could be both. Yeah. Like, that guy, Jermaine, that, I just feel like that whole story is just a little bit too weird. 
Oh, I know. And that's very old. Mm-hmm. And, like, I'm not saying people didn't make up fun stories back then, but I just can't really picture them making up this whole elaborate thing just for fun. Mm-hmm. And then the brothers. Who... The brothers. And the serial killer. Like, that, yes. these are, like, factual things. And I'm going to look up that serial killer and maybe talk the about The brothers, him. though, like, I feel like they could just have this whatever clinical vamp- vampirism or whatever. True. But what about the guy? But maybe serial not. killer guy. Maybe they gave him trauma. <laughs> maybe. Okay. Mm, yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I... Yeah. I don't know what to believe, because I don't want to just explain it away. I feel like it could be mm-hmm. true. I guess the I only know. way to figure it out is that we're just going to have to go to New Orleans and try to find us a real vampire. And I try know. to get bit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't... We need to Google how to lure in vampires in New Orleans. <laughs> No, but it says, remember I said that somebody claimed it takes, like, seven nights in a row. Okay, so they have we're going to have to blood for have to seven nights for, like, a row. week. Or, I mean, maybe it is just, like, in Twilight, and you just get bit once, and you're good. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we're just really going to have to find how out. Because that's how it is in a lot of things. I think that's TV, how it is in right? most things. And I don't think I've ever seen anything else other than just, like, one bite and you're done. Yeah, me too. So, except for this, yeah, except for this. this story, yeah. But maybe that's maybe that's the real tea. So, I don't know. I know. I really don't know. I don't think I could drink blood. The consistency really makes me want to throw up. I know. Even the thought. I, okay, back to Twilight. Just because I, you know, we were all obsessed with it in mm. like middle school, right? Oh yes. Um, and they had those like fake blood things. Yes. I got one, like, my mom got me one for my birthday or something, <laughs> just for fun, I don't know, and I drank it, and it was, I think it was the same consistency-ish, like, thick, Ew. and it was like, oh, I cannot drink this. It's the thickness, I can't do yeah. it. Ew. It's like, so they should have just been juice in that thing, like. <laughs> for real, just put some, like, red wine in there. <laughs> yeah, or something, I don't know. It's just so funny. That's so crazy. I just really don't know what to, I'm so, I really don't know what to believe. I know. I wish I could, like, just keep doing more and more research on these vampires, but then I would have been talking for hours and hours, because there's so much. There, that really is so much. I, I mean, I'm I'm genuinely shocked over here. Mm-hmm. Truly don't know what to believe. I know. It's fun stuff. It really is. And what's really crazy is that I didn't even think about it until right now, but our stories are very similar this week. Oh. Not, I mean, mine's not about the vampire. Isn't but, that blood, though? Mm, yeah, some, somewhat. So, okay. Let's, how about we just get into it, and you'll see the similarities um, pretty much okay. almost immediately. So, this week, I'm doing The Legend of the Wendigo. Have you ever heard of the Wendigo? Yes. Is that... I think I've heard of that from, like, Supernatural, maybe? Yes. Okay, yes. That I wrote Is it, it down. Wendigo or Wind? So, I don't know how to pronounce it, and nobody knows how to pronounce it. It is from all over the whole world. Pretty much, people have their different versions of it. Uh, so, okay. but I'm calling it the Wendigo because that's how I like to say it. And, I mean, okay. that's how, that's one of the ways. But, yes, it is from Supernatural, and it's also from um, a bunch of other shows. One that I watched was, it's in Charmed and Grimm, too. So, mm-hmm. but this is a very popular very well-known creature except for i didn't really know anything about it um Mm -hmm. before but anyway so yeah i i feel like i just remember the name yeah i don't know i think you'll probably remember it once i say what this is yeah i might um so base i said it was like all around the world but primarily the wendigo is in north america and specifically canada is Ooh, like we're Canadian story. Canadian story. Shout out to our Canadian listeners. We love you. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically, they comes from so many different people, but the main people that the story comes from is the Algonquin tribe. Okay. And so basically, Wendigos are described as very powerful, evil monsters that have the desire to kill and eat humans. Oh my god, wait, mm-hmm. that does sound like a vampire. I know, I know. But they don't want to just suck the blood, no, 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 they want to eat you whole, full, every single thing about you, they want it. 
They're hungry. Wait, why did I, I just realize I never described what a vampire is, but it's like everybody knows, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> everybody knows what a vampire is. For sure. Anyways. If you don't know what a vampire is, honestly, just Google it. Quick Google search. If you don't know what a vampire is, you're at the wrong show. <laughs> you're, listening. <laughs> you're listening to the wrong show. <laughs> um, okay, anyway. <laughs> so the word Wendigo <laughs> is translated to evil spirit that devours mankind. But, okay. <laughs> so pretty That's much pretty, exactly uh, what it is. <laughs> yeah, pretty straightforward. <laughs> right. They... You know, they just made it really what it is for that. Um, Wendigos can make humans have feelings of, like, insatiable greed and hunger and the desire to eat humans. So, basically, they want to eat humans. But if if for some reason they don't, like, eat you, you will turn into a Wendigo. So, they turn you into a cannibal. Yes. Yes, they do. And so... Hmm. The Wendigo. Wendigo's not nice in any way, shape, or form. Very evil. And um, indigenous representations of this creature is basically described as a giant humanoid creature with a heart of ice, a very foul smell, and apparently, if one is near you, you will get a sudden, like, unreasonable chill because oh. they have, like, a heart of ice. <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know. <laughs> okay, like so how big are they? So you said huge. They're like, like they're like proportionally the size of humans, but I'm talking like tall, 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 mm-hmm. very tall. I don't know like the feet measurement, but just way taller than us. Like as big as my house? Okay, no. <laughs> just probably <laughs> like if I had to guess, I would say like eight feet, nine feet tall. Okay, yeah, yeah. Instead of like five, six feet tall like normal humans are yes yeah, so like a bear maybe yeah yeah maybe a little bit bigger though um okay and some people like recently say that like wendigos are similar to werewolves but everybody like denies that and they just say like no that's just because of like monsters in hollywood that they're trying to like mix up the legends yeah um so you know i said that wendigos are very tall but like, when I said that, I first, like, imagined, like, I don't, like, not, I just, I did not imagine what a Wendigo actually looks like. So, Wendigo's skin is pulled so tightly over its bones that it looks completely emaciated. Um, Ugh. its color, like, its skin color is the color mm-hmm. of gray ash, and people say it's the color of death. And oh their eyes are pushed very deeply back into their sockets. So basically, this creature is a big old tall skeleton, is what it looks like. Mm-hmm. And <gasps> Slender Man. I did not see anything about the connection between the two. But all I can see and when I read this is Slender Man. Because the Wendigos are also found in the woods only pretty much. And I'm like, this is Slender Man, <laughs> honestly. Maybe they ble- that's what the person who made Slender Man like, based it off of. Maybe. I really think so, because the similarities are just undeniable, in my opinion. Um, so when it goes also, this is just so sickening. Um, their lips are bloody and completely ripped, because like the skin is just Ooh. being pulled so tightly. And it smells like death and corruption. So this is just so oh yummy. Gosh. Is it because they, like, used to be a human and then, like, what, their insides grew too much and their skin didn't? Okay, you know you're kind saying? of you're kind of on the right track. So, the reason that they look like this is because every time that they eat someone, they grow. Which is right. crazy to think about. But, but not but their skin? No, they grow, but... It means, yeah, not their skin. I mean, skin, I mean, if you think about it, like, if this creature really is real, which I actually really think that it is, like, skin doesn't grow like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, skin, it kind of just is what it is, for the most part, you know? Yeah, so it's like, they just are growing rapidly, and it just can't keep up, maybe. Yeah, yes. But, so, the more they grow, the more hungry they are, because they have a bigger body to fill, 
Oh. And so they keep having to eat people, but that keeps making them bigger. And so the skin just can't catch up. So it's just like a constant, a constant, constant struggle. So basically Wendigos are both gluttonous, but also like starving at the same time, which is like, just like they're in a constant cycle of struggle. And so the um, Algonquin people see this creature as the embodiment of gluttony, greed, and excess, never satisfied, always looking for more. Um, and so this is what really, this is the part that really made me think, like, our stories are so similar, because in modern day psychiatry, there's a term known as Wendigo psychosis. <gasps> and it's not recognized by the DSM either, but it's, everybody know like, everybody in the field of, like, psychology Mm -hmm. like agrees that this is a thing that people experience and it's real or at least that they think that it's real the people who are going through it and basically the symptoms of wendigo psychosis is having an intense craving for human flesh but also the extreme fear of becoming a cannibal (gasps) oh my god yeah so this disease is primarily seen in Algonquin people, and they believe it's because they're being possessed by the Wendigo spirit. Um, okay, that's crazy that it's mainly those people, like them, like their people. I know, and it's not it's like, not just them, but primarily it is. Um, is it just because they know what to look out for? Maybe. Like, maybe some people, like, who aren't part of the tribe or whatever, you know, just... Maybe, or maybe they really are being possessed by these spirits of Wendigos. Yeah. Um, and some studies show ties, because people really study this, because, I mean, this is, like, a really real thing. And they, so the studies show ties between not having enough food and being so hungry that pe- these people feel like their only choice is cannibalism. So I don't know about that. And how that really relates to this hmm. mental thing. Do any of them, like, break and, like, do it? Like... Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I will get into some stories later. Oh, no. <laughs> but, yeah. Many people, actually. But, so, but be- in, like, more recent times, they have been able to prevent cannibalism in these people. Because, I mean, they've been studying it more. So, and the way that they prevent them from eating people is by feeding them fatty animal meats. And even, ew, this is sickening. This is really sickening, so prepare yourself. Um, giving them animal grease to drink. Like, from, Ugh. I'm literally going to throw up if I even think about it for oh more than God. one second. I'm not going to think about it. No, 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 no. So, the most famous case of Wendigo psychosis um, involves a trapper from the Cree tribe named Swift Runner. And so, I said... This is mainly the Algonquin people, but the most famous case is actually from the Cree tribe. Okay. So it just shows, like, it's not just them. So mm-hmm. um, so during the winter of seven, 1878, Swift Runner and his family were starving real bad. They ran out of food. Like, they were really struggling. And sadly, his oldest son died mm-hmm. of malnutrition. And But they were only about 25 miles from emergency food supplies because, you know, I mean, it's cold in Canada. And, you know, in the winters, I'm sure they're really bad. So they have, like, stations set up. If you run out of food, you know, you can go get the emergency food supplies. Oh, that's kind of cool. I didn't even know that. Yeah, me neither. Hmm. And this was in, like, the very late 1800s, too. So, like, I mean, I'm sure it's not a problem anymore. But yeah, even then, they had, like, the supplies that you needed. And so they were, it's really important to know they were only 25 miles. Like, that's far I mean, yeah, but not how, really. How would it like? How long would it take them to travel that back then? Like, what did I mean, they have I don't know. Travel? Like, I don't know if they had anything. But I mean, if I if my family, I mean, his son literally died because they were so hungry. I would walk twenty five miles in the cold, <laughs> at least try. Or like, I don't know if they have like dog sleds. I don't know. I don't know yeah. what they have. But I mean, I would have tried to do everything to try to get that food. I feel like 25 miles isn't that far. But, um, so after his son died, and so this is what people believe made him develop the Wendigo psychosis, I guess, is the tragedy of, like, losing his son. 
Mm-hmm. Swift Runner, they had no food. They hadn't had food for weeks, but he sadly killed his whole family and ate all of the remains of them. Oh, my God. Yeah, and so... So, does this only really happen when people are really hungry? That's... I don't know if that's the case, but that's what the studies have said. Okay. That most cases are when people are really hungry. But I mean, that makes sense. I mean, it makes sense. But, like, this man had the opportunity to go get food. Well, yeah. But if you are going with the fact that, like, they're possessed, it might be easier for a spirit to possess you when you're, like, weaker and exactly. you are hungry. Exactly. And people argue, like, he had no choice but to eat his family. I'm like, baby, he had a little bit of a choice. I don't know. You say that that's not far, but I feel like that's far. No, no, it is far. It's definitely far. <laughs> but it's not that far enough that he didn't even try to go. Yeah, I mean, I guess I get you. Or, like, I don't know, just, like, he wouldn't, I mean... I mean, was there, like, a blizzard going on? I mean, I don't know. I mean, it was the winter. Yeah. But, like, he couldn't at least just, like, I don't know, die with his family? Like, I'm so confused. I mean, it says psychosis in the thing, like... Yeah, I mean, yeah, he lost his mind. Go crazy. Yeah, he lost his mind, so... Yeah. Um, but eventually, you know, people were like, I, like, what do we do here? Like... Is he crazy? Do we lock him up? I don't know. But eventually, he confessed and was executed by authorities at Fort Saskatchewan. Oh, jeez. For killing his family and eating them. Yeah. So, and this disease has been highly debated by, like, scientists, which is why it's still not in the DSM. And But it's more recently, ever since the 80s, it's been being studied more and more. So, maybe one day, very soon, we'll know more about it. I don't know. I feel like... Isn't that a thing people say, though? Like, if you're, you know, lost somewhere with the with your team, like, and then you guys get really hungry, are you going to, like, yeah. try to eat like, each other? Eat? Yeah. Like, that's like a... Th- oh, it's definitely a thing. thing. people talk about. Oh, it's definitely a thing. And I feel like the fact that, I mean, it's first of all crazy that they named it the Wendigo Psychosis to me. Yeah. But, yeah, I just... Because did know. okay, am I just making this up, or did that happen to like a soccer team that got stuck somewhere? Okay, well, a soccer team did get stuck, <laughs> um, and then but somebody. Ate. I don't think, at least not not the soccer team. The soccer team did not eat. All right, maybe it's other. something else. Something you know. Yeah, I don't know. I just. But no, I mean, I know. I don't know. Maybe it's a movie. I don't know, but I have a vague yeah. memory of somebody who was stuck in the middle of the ocean two Mm. people on, like, a life raft, and one ate the other one. But I don't know if that was real or if that was in a movie. Yeah. Regardless, this is a very common thing that, like, it happens. I feel like it does make sense if you're that hungry and that's, like, in your mind, it's, like, the only thing you can eat in your life. Mm -hmm. For sure. But the fact that gets me about that is that he confessed to it. He was like, yeah, I did it. And I'm just like, sir, why would you, like... (laughs) I mean, good for you. Maybe the, the guilt probably got to him eventually, but... I mean, when the psychosis wears off, you're like, oh, I just you're like, oh, yikes, I just really... That that really yeah. sickens me. Like, can yeah. you imagine him, like, coming out of that and I then, like, realizing he ate his whole family? Yes. Like, that's crazy. Oh, that's crazy. I hard. don't know... See, I... <laughs> I feel like I've thought about this recently, which is weird. <laughs> okay. I think somebody's asked me recently, like, oh, if this happened, like, would you... Like, I don't, like, I want to say I wouldn't, but you never know, I guess. I mean. If you're going to go crazy. Yeah. I mean, I, it's not out of the realm of my possibility. If I was dying somewhere, I would, I mean, if I had no choice. I mean, I don't know. It depended. I guess it depends on who I'm with. But. (laughs) Me and you. You're you're going to I would not. I would not eat you. I really would not. Right. (laughs) It kind of really sickens me to think about it, so maybe I really wouldn't do that. Yeah. But anyway, aside the whole Wendigo psychosis situation, back to the creature itself. Um, So these creatures use human-like abilities to communicate and trick their victims. Basically, they can mock human voices. And I have seen TikToks recently 
of specifically one. There's this one, and I think I talked about it before, before I even knew I was going to do this, like in a couple episodes ago, where these girls were in the woods and they knew for a fact that their dad was at home. And they had got out to take a picture because it was like a really pretty sunset in some like national park or whatever, somewhere up north. And they, in the video, you can hear this guy calling her name. I don't remember what her name was, but it was like, Maddie, Maddie, please come here. I need your help. And it was in the woods. And she was like, is that dad? Oh, no. And the other girl was like, no, he's at home. What do you mean? And it was like, Maddie, please come here. I need your help, please. And, it, and, and they were like, no, 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 no. We cannot do that. And so that's what I'm talking about. That's probably a Wendigo trying to oh, lure no. you in to come. Uh-huh. Yeah. So um, if you guys ever experience that, don't. And you know somebody is not with you. Don't go towards it. That terrifies me. Same. That's like, there's like creepy stories that you see, like, you're in your room and your mom calls you to dinner or whatever. Right, yeah. And then she comes out of the bathroom and is like, oh, don't go down don't there. Don't go down so there. Me. I hear it, it's yeah. Like, which one do you believe? Right. Oh my god, that is so scary. Right, because like, who, what, like, if, if it's somebody you love, like, if I thought my mom or dad was like calling for help in the middle of the woods, I would run. Yeah, because it's like, oh, maybe like, they did come out here. Right. I don't know. Shout out to Juju screaming in the background. <laughs> oh, I can't hear. Oh, well. <laughs> okay, so I was able to find a really old folk story that has been passed down for apparently many generations. Mm -hmm. So I thought I'd give you the overview. <sighs> Juju. <laughs> um, so, one day, don't know what time period this was, but one day, a Wendigo stole this boy, this young boy, he was able to lure him in, grab him, but he was so young and thin, the Wendigo was like, I need to travel with him so I can get him fat before I can eat him. Oh. And this sounds crazy. This sounds made up. But, I mean, like, it's a little boy, like, you know. Just get someone else. Like, what? Right. Like, why would you not? I don't know. He was very determined to stick with this, this boy. So he ended up traveling with him and... But because they were traveling, and this must have been, like, a long time ago, he wasn't gaining weight because they would be, like, walking places, you know, doing this. And he was like, you have to gain weight because I have to eat you. He didn't say that to him, obviously, because... Oh, I thought he but, did. But, you know, like, that's his mindset. <laughs> right. And so one day they rolled up to this village, and the Wendigo was like, mm -hmm, perfect, we can get this boy some food. He's not actually saying this. I'm just narrating it myself. Yeah, he's <laughs> just thinking it. Yes. And so when the boy went to get food, he he realized, he was like, this man, this creature is trying to kill me. And so he told the people of the village, he was like, hey, there's a wind to go with me, and I need you guys to help me really bad. And I skipped a really big part of the story, so let me go back. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Also, I can hear Juju in the background. <laughs> I know. He's literally <laughs> screaming his head off. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Um, but he's not coming back in here because he was really bad last time, so. <laughs> Sorry, Juju. Anyway, b before they got to the village, we're going to rewind just a little bit. Okay. The Wendigo had a knife, and he would cut the boy's hand to see if there was enough fat on him uh, to eat. What? Yeah. That, which is just painful. I'm, like, looking at my hand now. I know, like, I'm, like, rubbing it. it. I'm, like, oh, my God. I guess, like, in, like, the juicy part near your thumb, he was trying to see if there would be, like, enough for him to be full. So, anyway. Oh, my God. Fast forward. The boy's like, please help me. This one goes with me. He won't leave me alone. Like, I need help. And they obviously did not believe him. They were like, okay, little boy. <laughs> and he was able to show them the cuts on his hand and be like, look, he's looking to see if my if I'm fat enough to eat. And so they were like, okay sure little boy like very suspect of this little boy obviously mm -hmm. who wouldn't be but then they heard a voice calling out to the boy being like hurry up and don't tell any lies to any of those people and that is what he said <clears throat> <clears throat> sorry and so all of the village people were like oh so you're actually being serious okay so they were like we're gonna um, help you out and so a bunch of like men from this village got together went to where the Wendigo was and was able to, like, because there were so many of them, they were able to grab it, t take him down to the ground, and cut off his legs. And they thought that this was going to, like, kill him. 
you know, mm-hmm. bleed out, whatever. And so they left him there because obviously he can't go anywhere now. He doesn't have legs. And they left him there to die. Came back a couple hours later to, like, get his body or whatever. He was not dead. <laughs> Do you want to know what he was doing? Oh, no. I don't think what you want to know what this is doing. Trigger warning, this is extremely disgusting. Oh, um, God. Okay. The Wendigo was sucking the bone marrow juice from inside of the bones of his own legs that had been cut off. What? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Disgusting. That is literally disgusting. But that's, like, how greedy they are, apparently. They don't care. Because what? they're just that hungry. And obviously, you know, that story, probably not real. But I thought it was crazy. So I was like, I'm gonna tell it. <laughs> Cause... That is crazy. I... Hmm. Like, what? I know. I know. So, um, anyways. In other tribes, um, such as the Cree and the Ojibwe, they actually, to this day, have ceremonial dances that are performed during times of famine to reinforce to, like, the people that the Wendigo is a very serious worry and that they shouldn't take it lightly. So they basically have these, like, ceremonies to, like, remind people, like, hey, be on the lookout of Wendigos, like, and they do it during famines. So, like, I'm really just very curious if Wendigo, the creature, is a real thing or if these really are people who are just so hungry that they're turning into cannibals themselves. Oh, yeah, you have a good point. Um, hmm. I don't know. I mean, I guess part of it wouldn't be, at, like, the whole story wouldn't be true then because they, if it's just a human, they wouldn't grow. Right? Yeah. But, yeah. but, but I mean, they fully believe, they fully believe in this creature that it's 100% yeah. real. I just think it's a little bit muddy with, like, the psychosis and the creature. Yeah. But maybe I think both because, are real. Maybe. Like, so they know, like, humans can, can turn... get it. Mm-hmm. So, like, they just say you're turning into one. Yeah. Okay. Yes. There we go. So, yeah. There we go. So they do exist. Yeah. Maybe. They No, they do. Sort of. <laughs> I do believe they both exist. I'm just very confused about the whole situation. Because it's yeah. just so crazy to me. Like, this is, like, it's real. Regardless mm-hmm. of anything. Like, people are eating people. See, our stories are similar because... <laughs> They're both real and fake. Yeah. Like, it's... Well, it's, not fake, but, like, real yeah. and real. Like, yeah. I don't know. Two different versions of the truth, I guess. Yeah. Like, and we don't know which one. Uh-huh. Both. Who it's knows? It's more of, like, it's, like, the science fiction version, version yeah. and, like, the real life version. Exactly. Exactly. It's crazy. It really is. So, this dance that they do to remind the people, it involves wearing masks, and they dance backwards, like, around a drum. So, I don't know, some kind of symbolic, like, ceremony that they do. And the last known Wendigo ceremony, it doesn't say what year, but they do it, I'm pretty sure, every year. Um, Okay. But it was conducted in the United States at Lake Wendigo, which is located in Leech Lake Indian Reservation in northern Minnesota. Huh. So. That's cool. I thought that was really crazy. And they also have a lake. What do they do for that? To keep them away? No, this is just to um, remind the people... Like, so they do it during, like, famines um, uh-huh. to remind the people to, like, be on the lookout. Oh. Because um, I guess that's when people, it's when people are weak. See, this is, this is the convolution that I'm getting to. That, like, when people are weak and in times of famine, I think that's when the Wendigo preys on them. Even though, like, they're not, like, as fat, I guess, that they would yeah. want to eat them. But I think they're weaker and easier to manipulate that way yeah, so basically that the sense. dance and the ceremony is just to like warn the people that they need to be on the lookout for the wendigo and that it's like something serious and that they need to like take it seriously okay so, hmm. yes um okay but taylor mm-hmm. this can be led back to twilight too a little bit because okay um, how would that be? jacob's reservation i maybe know they have that. no i know <laughs> <laughs> i was thinking about it the whole time i was like oh my god I don't. Do you know what tribe he's in? Because I don't remember. The Quileute. Of course, you know right off the top of the head. <laughs> I had to. I had to take a second. But yeah, <laughs> the Quileute tribe. Hmm. I don't see. I don't know if that is that a real tribe That's or did I, no, Stephanie Meyer make it up? I, I don't, don't know. really know. <laughs> I do not know. We will come back with that information, <laughs> though. Honestly, I, I if you're curious. listening to this and you haven't read or watched Twilight, um, please do. <laughs> no, I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, please do. 
It's very much so worth it. I mean, you don't have to, but... No, you do. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so, if you are curious, um, Wendigo attacks are extremely, extremely hard to survive. Basically impossible, almost. I mean, seems like it. They just eat you. <laughs> yeah, but it's said that if you do survive an attack, you will almost for sure fall victim to Wendigo psychosis. Um, okay. My personal advice is just if you think you hear somebody calling out to you, like you think it's your mom, being like, please help me. How about you just call your mom on the phone and be like, hey, um, are you calling me from the middle of the woods somewhere? And <laughs> then, like, don't go towards it, you know? I know. Right. Um, but apparently, Wendigos don't like fire. But not like if you see a Wendigo, just like throw a torch, like, and it backs up. No, no, no. If you're going to use fire to defeat a Wendigo, you need to set it on fire. And I'm like... Oh, okay. I'm like, okay, well, if you set really anything on fire, it's going to then run away. So... Right. The logic behind that one, I'm like, I mean, yeah, it probably would work, but what wouldn't that work on, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, honestly, you're right. <laughs> like, what would, Nothing. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so... This is the other way that people, like, kind of connect it back to why it's similar to werewolves. Also, Jacob... Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that they have like an, a heart of ice. And so apparently if you stab it in the heart with a silver stake, that can also kill it. And okay. I'm like, that would probably also kill anything. <laughs> but <I know>. okay. <laughs> um, and so, okay. Also fun fact, if it's said that if an ice, if you think you're being followed by a Wendigo, Mm -hmm. Because apparently, like, Wendigos don't, it's not just like, oh, you're walking through the woods, there you go, there it is. It, like, stalks you, kind of, watches you, follows you around, and then, like, over time. Okay, that is Slenderman, then. That's what I'm saying. It's, like, this, it's just so weird. It's so many things tied up into one thing, mm -hmm. and it's, like, it blows my mind. But, apparently, they can somewhat control the weather. Because if a Wendigo is close to you it's been recorded that ice storms or tornadoes will come up out of the blue around hmm. you and then that's right before like at the attack so oh, that's just another thing to watch out for but basically all i know is that if a window goes after you all i can really say is good luck charlie because <laughs> good luck charlie <laughs> um, i don't know there's just really no good way you can you can take it out. Like, you really can't fight this one. Yeah. If, it's, if, it, if it wants you, it, honestly, it got you. Ariana Grande. It wants it, it yeah, has it. That's what it, <laughs> that's what it sounds like. Right. Um, so, but as we said, like, with pretty much, I think, every single le legend that we've covered up until this point, um, you know, they could be real or they could be stories to teach people lessons. Mm -hmm. You know, just made up. So, some Native Americans believe and have believed for many centuries that this story is made like just literally just a metaphor and made up and viewed as like a conceptual idea to teach people to not be greedy. Okay. And I'm like, oh, I agree that, you know, it's saying like, Oh, don't be greedy. But like, this is very serious. <laughs> yeah. It's also like eating people. It's like, yeah, it's you like could have had people? a different metaphor. If you're That's gonna... what I'm saying. Like, if you're going to make a metaphor, you don't have to make it this crazy. And people do experience when they go psychosis. There have been people like people. I mean, people go missing straight up. People go missing and there's nothing left of them. Yeah. And like, what happened? How can you explain it? I don't know. The Wendigo got him. That's all I got to say. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the most recent very popular sighting was in 2019 in Canada, um, just a little bit north of Ontario. And they, like, didn't get it on camera, but, like, they're like, we got it on camera. And it's like, you, you can hear, like, somebody calling out. And I'm like, this could be real, could be <laughs> fake. I don't know. But... It was, like, all over the news, apparently. So, people people believe that that was, like, a real sighting. But, yeah. Um, yeah, and I already said, like, it was, like, mentioned in Supernatural and Grimm and mm -hmm. um, Charmed and just so many TV shows. Because, I mean, obviously, this creature is extremely scary. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. yeah. So, that is The Legend of the Wendigo. 
Well, that's crazy. I I know. Love that. I know. But I don't love it. I hate it. Yeah. But... Oh, I hate it. I hate <laughs> it so much. I, I, for some reason, I'm just really scared. Um, and also, I, I mentioned before, but it primarily is in near and in forests and woods in northern United States and Canada. So if you're in that area, please be careful. Don't go into the woods. Honestly, stay yeah. out of all woods. If that's anything you've learned from this podcast, you just got to be careful See, in the woods. but, like, with these creatures and stuff, like, what about camping? Does that count? <laughs> yes, camping definitely counts. Like, being at a campground where there's Oh, maybe not a campground. No, maybe yeah. not that. Because I, cause I always, like, hear things like, oh, all these creatures in the <laughs> woods. Like, are they going to get me if I'm going to a family campground? I mean, they might, though. Because I think back to that TikTok, and I'm like, those girls were literally on the side of the road in this national park taking a picture of this really cute, like, sunset. Yeah. And I heard national parks are crazy, though. National parks are crazy. Like, really creepy. Well, I did that whole story about national parks. Mm-hmm. You sure did. I, because I'm going camping, actually, next weekend. <laughs> Oh, my <laughs> right by a lake, though. Um, it's sort of foresty, but there's, like, a lake right mm-hmm. there. Well, the good news is, is that you're not in northern the United States yeah. or Canada, so I think you're good on the Wendigo aspect. I don't know yeah. about any other aspect, though. That's what I'm saying. Like, there might be other things. There's but... definitely other things out there. Um, oh, and I, you reminded me, though, I forgot to mention, in New Orleans, um, people, like, a lot of people go missing there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so what if that has to do with vampires? Oh, it definitely know. does. It definitely does. And, like, if you're in, like, northern U.S., Canada area, you go missing? I'm sorry, baby. The Wendigo got you. What What can, what can we say? Vampires and Wendigos yeah. are real. And yeah. there's really no question about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there's a few questions about it. But <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, definitely. But. <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where I stand. I am yeah. very afraid of both of those things, and I'm very also intrigued. I do not want to eat people. I really hope I never get Wendigo psychosis, and I, I hope I never get the other... Drink Let's... blood. Nope, never want to do that. Clinical vampirism. Clinical vampirism. Nope, don't want that either. Um, so, yeah. I don't know. I know. Yeah, if you guys um, have any experience with those things, um, tell us. Yeah, please tell us. <laughs> That'd be cool. Really cool. Um, there will be pictures. Obviously, we don't have real pictures of the Wendigo or the vampires, but we'll definitely put some pictures oh, up I'll on our Instagram. Oh, I'll post pictures of the Count St. Germain. Oh my gosh, you have a real picture of him? Well, there's like portraits. Oh, I didn't realize you had the portraits, so. It's the 1700s. I am yeah. so excited. Okay, yes. Check our Instagram for that because that's going to be exciting. And, and there might be pictures of John and Wayne Carter. I'm not Ooh, sure. Ooh, okay. That's really cool. Yeah, there's yeah. definitely like drawings and stuff of the wendigo and they are very creepy so those will be on there too awesome um, i'm excited oh. to see wait what oh yeah the, the wendigo. i'm excited to see them yeah yes 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 well you probably won't be but <laughs> when i show them to you but yes mm-hmm. um rate and review us on apple podcast as per usual. Mm-hmm. happy 20th episode thanks for Yay. sticking with us all this time crazy mm-hmm. um but yeah i don't really have anything else for you do you Nope. Okay, All right, keep the music. See you next week. <laughs>